Rattler. How it started was dumping $4,000 a year into rental cars in Montana. We go there at least once a year, um, usually, and usually pretty big trips, and we got a lot of people. Well, we needed a car that would fit our whole family. So we just wanted something we could knock around in, not worry about it getting dirty. We were sitting down talking about the rental cars that we had to get for this last time, and I'm like, you guys want to just build a an older car. I don't mind, you know, if we do something older, I don't mind working on it. This is right on the border. Fuel injection was just popping in there. I'm a kind of a pre-fuel injection mechanic. That's when I stopped doing it, was when I moved from Montana. So that would have been 1989. But we landed on an older model Chevy Suburban. So we went on the hunt looking for one and we didn't really find anything that was like decent enough in the right ballpark. So we kind of let it die down. And then one day he found one on eBay. So he bought that. I'm not even sure where he got it, but he did. So he found this in Arizona and he flew out there and drove it to Denver. Didn't give him too many issues. He had something he wanted them to look at because it was acting up on that trip. The guy that had it before has this anti-theft system in there that's looks like, looks like it'd be turned on and off with an audio jack. What key is it? See this? This is your security. Did you buy duct tape to tape up the headliner? So you he have and I, and I glued it too. I fixed the headliner already. Nice. See how it, right now, turn the key. So you're gonna try to start it. Uh, you gotta put square key in. You're too young, you should have known that. That looks like a bob. No, that's my upside down. There you go. So you should have known all this. This is like, this is like, this is like, this is like me going out. He did, for a second there, he did think that the vehicle left him stranded on the side of the road. Uh, because that, what he was told was you have to put it in, start it, and then take it out. And we didn't know at the time that you could just leave it in and it'd be fine. And so he, you know, he obviously got some fuel, uh, made a pit stop, got back in, thing thing wouldn't start. So he was freaking out about that. He left it in Denver so we could drive it from there to Montana because the goal was to get it to Montana and leave it in Montana. That was the plan. And then we flew back into Denver. Then we headed out on our trip to Montana. Made several stops. Our first stop was in uh, Jackson Hole. Beautiful place. From Jackson Hole, we went, uh, continued north on to the Yellowstone National Park. I made some stops in there. From Yellowstone, we went to a town that's uh, in the Beartooths. It was, a, it was a beautiful little town. It was a little town called uh, Cook City. Uh, again, stayed there a night. Um, then left from there to Red Lodge, and then from Red Lodge to Billings uh, in time for Cousin Ed's wedding. After the wedding, we went to Glacier National Park, which is up around the uh, Whitefish area, three hours just south of the uh, United States Canadian border. Yeah, we drove it all around Montana. Again, hadn't done anything to it. We were definitely probably risking it in that aspect of the fact that we hadn't fixed it up. We hadn't checked anything out. We just assumed it would be okay. It was there at uh, Cousin Ed's um, for the rest of the, for the remainder of the year. And then we came back up there that winter, drove it around all winter. <laughs> just the look on the, everyone's face, they're, they're just like, whoa, we've never seen this old and, and, and junky of a vehicle. They've kind of been spoiled over the years because their dad is definitely likes nice cars and nice trucks. So that was pretty fun to see their, their reactions. The problem is my spoiled brat children have never rode around in a piece of shit. I was here working at the shop, and next thing you know, someone came up to me and said, Dad bought a Suburban. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, I don't really want to ride in that. <laughs> I honestly had no idea what it was going to look like. Like, I've never seen a car like this. So I was like, how are we going to turn that into something where we're like, yeah, let's drive around in that. But overall, its condition was pretty good. I mean, man, look, are you watching? Crack, right? Did you crack? He had this headliner that would that would sag from from segment to segment. So. Look at your headliner. Your headliner. Your headliner's fixed. It ain't even hitting your head no more. <laughs> I know when we first got in it, the headliner was like resting on top of your head, and so we had to rig up you know some duct tape to help get it out of the way. Rides like a million bucks. Bust this crack scratch out of the windshield. Up. Woo. There's nothing wrong with it. Put the washer fluid in it. Let's try it. We're going to try it out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look. 
Right, now that's working perfectly. When you're driving 60, 70 miles an hour down the road, it's going to come right back. It's mechanically sound, and it just wasn't beat up. That was the greatest oh, thing. Rattlesnakes, rat, rat, rattler rides again, man. Oh, rattler. <laughs> I can come to that. Hey, 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 that was good pressure. I can. I can come to the aid of people's rear windshields. That was good pressure. <laughs> you got a dirty rear windshield? Let me help you out there, buddy. <laughs> Quit wasting this stuff. Vehicles last a little longer up there. People take care of them. They keep driving them. So it's not like we stood out, but my kids felt like they stood out. Their whole life rode around in, in nice new vehicles and it's just, it's well, you see what they even, what they drive now. Dad was originally calling Rattler Burby and everybody hated it. They're like, that's such a lame name. That's not a name, you're not naming it that. Like every time they talked to us about it, I complained. I was like, it's not happening, no, I don't care. I'm not getting in a car named Burby and then they call it Barbie and that's just weird. Stephanie has so much personality and so much opinion. And then somebody was talking about how much it rattled when they were driving at home, so they started calling it Rattler. Well, that's better than Burby. And we drove it back all the way to Florida. And I think we did it, I think we did that trip in two days. So imagine this 30-year-old vehicle driving from all the way from Arizona, all the way up to basically the border, and then all the way back down to Florida. Rattler went on a road trip for sure. And then he wanted to fix it up, make it all BW'd out, is what he calls it. The Suburban we got, I think, was actually just a little bit too nice. So we've seen the potential of what it could be. Our next task was figuring out what the heck are we going to do with it. It's going to be a head turner for sure.